From 2019 champions to 2020 contenders and now 2021 bottom feeders headed for the top of the NBA draft lottery, this video shows you the harsh truth about the Toronto Raptors. Losing Kawhi Leonard may have been out of their control, but what were the mistakes their front office made to end up at the bottom of the East? Stay tuned for that and to find out what the Raptors' deadline moves indicate for their future. Right quick, commenter shout out to Ona for giving a great take on why the Nets have the greatest collection of talent ever assembled on one team. Links in the description if you missed my Nets video. The question for next video shout out is coming up, but let's get into this. How did Toronto go from parading in the streets to fantasizing about the draft lottery in less than two years, and all without suffering any major injuries? One of the best players on planet Earth leaving their team directly after winning a championship didn't help, but the next season in 2019-20 after losing Kawhi, Toronto still finished with the second best record in the NBA. Pascal Siakam seemed to have broken out into an all-star, and the Raptors' legit number one scoring option in replace of Kawhi. Serge Ibaka, Norman Powell, and Fred Van Vliet also had career best seasons, and undrafted rookies Terrence Davis and Matt Thomas looked like legit contributors off the bench and were getting regular playing time. Toronto's front office was looking like it couldn't make a single mistake but after Toronto was eliminated in Game 7 of their second round series with the Celtics, the 2020 NBA offseason happened, and Toronto executives Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster prioritized bringing back the heart and soul of the team in Fred Van Vliet. And I'm not saying Fred didn't deserve to cash in. The man clearly deserved his $80 million contract, but Toronto had already seen one center in Marc Gasol walk in free agency, so at this time, I was thinking Masai was going to re-sign Serge Ibaka. I even posted a video where I projected Freddie would sign in New York, but let's be real here. The Raptors' front office had made countless flawless decisions in a row, and they were bound to make a mistake at some point. The mistake that cost Toronto was not bringing back the first player in league history to ever record 500 three-pointers while having 1,500 blocks simultaneously in Serge Ibaka. The value of Mafuzi chef to Toronto on both ends of the floor simply can't be overstated, as he was the backbone to the Raptors' defense. He spaced the floor out with a 40% three-point stroke offensively, and his vocal leadership was crucial for the team's focus. So, I know Kawhi Leonard convinced his old pal to join the Clippers, but I was stunned and pretty disappointed as a Raptors fan that executives Ujuri and Webster didn't invest more time and money attempting to bring home a man who was so crucial to Toronto's 53-win season. The most head-scratching part about Toronto's front office prioritizing Fred over Serge is the fact that they already had two other scoring guards who thrive with the ball in their hands in Kyle Lowry and, at the time, Norman Powell. The Raptors thought they could survive with pure small ball with no center for some reason, which was really odd considering going small with Siakam at center last year wasn't a lineup where the Raptors thrived. For whatever reason, Nick Nurse benched Ibaka in the final minutes of Game 7's second round last playoffs, and Nurse constantly tried Siakam at the five, and it never worked. Serge should have been on the floor for a lot more time, including in the final minutes of Game 7, and Toronto's front office never realized the mistake that Coach Nurse made, which is something that's become a theme. Nick Nurse was the coach of the year in 2020, but this year, he's really been struggling to manage the mentality of his squad, and one of the reasons for that is not having a leader like Ibaka to help guide their team on the floor. But Toronto's front office will live and die by their head coach, as despite having an impressive assistant in Adrian Griffin, who's seeming like he's ready to take over as the main man in charge next year, Toronto's extremely committed to the coach they think won them the championship in 2019. Nick did throw an elite box and one on Stephen Curry to shut him down, but let's be frank, if it wasn't for Kawhi's heroics and Masai's roster around him in Lowry, Van Vliet, and Pascal stepping up, the Raptors wouldn't have secured their first championship. To be fair though, Nick Nurse was a much better coach back then, as he was the rookie coach who had no ego or hard feelings towards anyone. Nowadays, he's far from the player's coach he once was during the Raptors' championship run as the Raptors' front office fined Pascal Siakam $50,000 for even arguing with Nurse. 
Knicks constantly made excuses for his team's situation instead of leading them through it like he's paid to do. And this man also seems to be struggling mightily in the post-pandemic world. Nurse said this after a loss early in the season, quote, I mean, I literally haven't left the hotel on our road trips yet. It's like you go to a city, you stay in a hotel. It's not like we're going out and doing a heck of a lot of bonding, end quote. And watching every game for Toronto, I can tell you Nurse has kept up this type of negative mentality, excuse-making type of mentality all year, which has killed the team's mantra. This man, Nurse, has turned Siakam into the scapegoat, but I'm sorry, it's time for the guitar player for the Arkells in Coach Nick Nurse to take some blame himself. I think Masai Ujiri needs to get it out of his head that this is some kind of generationally great coach and get back to managing the team like he did from 2013 all the way up until the 2020 offseason. Three days before the 2021 NBA trade deadline, the Raptors took their ninth straight loss at the hands of a team who just lost 20 straight themselves in the Houston Rockets. It was likely at that moment where Toronto's front office finally realized that this just wasn't going to be their year, because here's why it's evident that the Raptors are tanking with their actions at the deadline. Norman Powell is one of five NBA players averaging 19 points per game with a 60% effective field goal percentage, with stars Zion, Jokic, Levine, and Christian Wood being the only other players to do that. Not only did the Raptors trade their best player, Norman Powell, at the deadline, but this team is dead last in rebounding and didn't acquire the center that this roster desperately needed. To me, that's the clearest indication that this team's realized it's time to flee for Mobley and fade for Cade. To give Masai the benefit of the doubt though, you can't blame him for wanting a top 3-5 to five pick in the draft and scouting a top prospect. It's the one thing he's never experienced as a team president. And there's no doubt bringing in a shot creator like the Oklahoma State phenom Cade Cunningham or a player with Chris Bosh type potential and Evan Mobley could turn their franchise around. We've seen what one generationally great talent can do for an organization, so I think going the tanking route is actually the best decision for Toronto. You don't want to be trapped in the middle like the Orlando Magic, trading your best player and not having a player who can get their own shot or defensive rebounds. That's a great formula to take a ton of losses, so expect the Raptors to have a top 5 pick in this year's draft. And even a talent like Jalen Green, who's with the G League Ignite right now, or Jalen Suggs, who's playing in the Elite Eight with Gonzaga tomorrow, those are talents who could turn your franchise around as well. This draft class is damn solid and filled with a ton of upside. In terms of the future decisions Toronto should make, if they're not going to get rid of Nick Nurse, they should maybe look to trade Pascal Siakam in the summer, whose offense has seemed out of control throughout the year. Maybe you could convince Minnesota to give you Carl Anthony Towns in a package for Pascal. But for NBA videos like this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. I've got tons of dope topics on the way for you that I can't wait to post, so subscribe for that. But for a chance at next video, shout out. What's been the main problem for the Raptors in your opinion? Let me know your thoughts down below. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next time.